Get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. Get ready, get ready for a tea time and filter with your girl love and tea. Spilling all this hot tea on this podcast street. So get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. From tea time and filter with your girl love and tea. Hey, Tea Sippers, and welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely Tea. And I have my homegirl, Emily, here with me. Emily, say hey to the people. Hey. <laughs> so we want to come on here and talk about a few different things. It's a lot of stuff going on. As you guys know, Emily has been on here before, and she's from Memphis. And so me and her have been talking for the past like week and a half about the whole Young Dolph situation. And she's kind of been keeping me up to date on everything that's been going on down there. So as we all know, I believe it was this past Friday that they did his funeral and they had him in like a gold casket and it was a lot. So how do you feel as far as everything that's been going on in the city since Young Dolph died? Well, um, like you and I have spoke about previously the the summer was crazy there's a lot of uh violent crime that takes place in memphis we have a lot of murders there's been a lot of shootings uh a lot of kids very young kids have been getting shot so uh with the whole Dolph thing it was really surprising because he's from here i mean he's he's good like so the i, I just was shocked that he was killed where he was killed like that's his area so mm -hmm. it a lot of people, everybody around here knows. Like, I mean, there's old old folks that don't even listen to rap that know about Young Dolph and that he's he's dead. So the city has definitely been cutting up. There's been a lot more crime. I don't know if it's necessarily related to the whole thing with Dolph, but there has been a lot of crime uh, shootings and retaliation and stuff like that that's also been connected. So it, it's just crazy in the city right now. I think they've got a curfew or they've been talking about one, but then they didn't enforce it. So I don't know. It's crazy. Yeah, it's been a lot going on. And that's real interesting that you said that you're surprised that he got killed in his own hood where everybody knows him. They know that that's young Dolph. But I remember a long time ago, Lil Boosie said on a Vlad TV interview, he was saying that, you know, a lot of people will hate on you in your own neighborhood, in your own community where you're from. Um, it's called hypnotized by hatred. You know what I'm saying? Like they'll want to kill you just to say that they killed you. Whereas you can be from a whole, you can move to like, let's say they move from Memphis to Atlanta, or let's say you're from Atlanta, but you move to LA, you're more safer, you know, uprooting your roots and planting them in a whole nother city than staying in your city. Like people don't realize how many rappers and entertainers get killed in their own city. It's insane. Yeah, and it's what's really sad, too, is he really did uh, give so much back to his city, to the community. He mm -hmm. had just uh, got done doing, I think, like two different turkey drives at his old high school because, you know, it's kind of close to Thanksgiving. So he was back in his community literally giving back. And that's, you know, when it happened. And what's really sad is I, I think, I mean, I don't know for sure, but obviously it was a hit. And I don't know if it was someone in his camp. I don't know how whoever was after him knew where he was. But it was, I think everybody was just shocked. Because I was like, damn, he literally was just doing a turkey drive at his high school and got wiped out. Like, it's it's horrible. Yeah. You know, and the fact that he's a father, he's a husband, you know, it's just really sad. And another thing I've seen a lot of people making the connection because him, XXX, I mean, you talk about XXX all the time. Yeah, I'm a big um, X fan. <laughs> yeah, we talk about that all the time. And him, XXX, and um, I believe it was Mo3, the one who got killed on the freeway in Texas, mm -hmm. they all had distribution deals with the same company. So a lot of people found that very strange that all three of them wow. were taken out and they were all under the same distribution management company. Yeah, the the whole thing with X too, like I, I don't believe that whole situation. I don't mm -hmm. believe that just some people that he knew wanted to rob him and he ended up dying. I think there was a lot more to it that we know. Like it's it was just a really shady situation. And the same thing with Dolph. I think it, you know, so many he just had so much love in the city. I, I don't see it as just some random person just running up on him because they were jealous. Like, I think it was definitely planned. It was orchestrated. That was definitely a hit that was taken out. And speaking of him being a dad, I remember watching an interview he did where 
he was speaking so strongly about being in his kids' lives and just the thought of somebody else raising his kid because he didn't have, or his kids, uh, his parents weren't around, was just heartbreaking to him. So the fact that he was killed at such a young age and his kids still got to grow up without him is is really sad. Yeah, no, it really is. And that's the part that's just so unfortunate out here is that you have so many people who just don't respect life. Like we tell these dudes to find something to get them out the hood and to make money and take care of their families. And then they're not able to enjoy it. Um, Cause I know young Dolph owned his masters. I believe XXX owned his own masters as well. And I know King Von did. And so people are trying to, you know, are saying like, that's really weird that all these guys who are trying to be independent and not necessarily signed to the majors were also killed. You know, is this some type of sacrifice? What is going on? That's the part because they, they were pretty big, but they weren't like, let's say as big as like a Kanye Drake, you know, right. they were more mid-level. And so, you know, is it a thing where these guys because you have a lot of these guys coming into the game who have way more knowledge now. Well, if you have a big enough fan base, you don't have to sign with the majors. You right. know, you can kind of work on your own deal. You can just do distribution. I mean, Master P basically honed that in back in like the late 90s, early 2000s when he had an unheard of distribution deal, you know, was able to distribute his own music as opposed to giving these record companies all of this money. And so it's very interesting that these young men all died in the same violent manner. And like the old saying goes, a lot of people are worth more dead than alive. Yeah, because that's what everybody's been saying. You know, that's like, I don't know, I go to the nail shop and people are getting like young Dolph nails and stuff. And they're like, oh, you need to stream his music, stream his music. And I'm like, you know, was y'all streaming his music like that before? And I know that's the first thing that goes to uh, to people's heads, but... Dolph was very vocal about being independent and you can be independent and make more money than some of these. I mean, look at all the stuff going on with these like mega stars right now. That and have these, boy. Yeah. And uh, Doja Cat, all that stuff going on. They are in these horrible deals. They're, you know, they're probably internationally known, but Dolph probably was bringing home more money than them because he was independent. Right. And see, but that's what I always tell people. That's the trade off. That's where you have to really decide when you get to that crossroads. Do you want fame or do you want money? Because the two are not equal because you can have all the fame in the world. People can know you. You can be in all the publications, all the magazines, but you can still be broke. You get uh -huh. what I'm saying? Even going back to TLC. That's what I was just thinking yeah, of. They were like the biggest girl groups. And they were literally broke. You have regular people who bring home 300000 a year. Yeah. Let alone a mega star group like that. So for some people, that's where you have to really understand that, yeah, you may not ever get as famous as a Kanye or a Kim or a Drake. But to own your own masters and to get your own money, to me, that makes more sense than to be making all this money for somebody else. But that is also why, like you said, we have to support independent creative artists. And so many times we only support the big celebrities that are part of that mainstream machine. And I think that's where some of the frustration was for young Dolph, where, cause I know a few times he was talking about retiring because it felt like nobody was really supporting him in the same way they were supporting a lot of the majors. Yeah. Cause he wasn't getting that, that huge push, like a artist, like say Doja Cat that, you know, like has Pepsi endorsements and things that he's not getting that same push that she is. But like I said, he probably, I mean, I don't know how much money she's making or whatever, but he has more uh, longevity because mm -hmm. he can continue to make money off of his music. I mean, some artists are working, like literally working themselves sick and they're getting pennies to the dollar on all of their hard work. Yeah. And that's just part of the game, you know, that it's all about using people. And that's why sometimes I get disappointed when um, you have artists who've been in the game and they and they know what it is to get screwed. Right. To get these horrible contracts and not be treated fairly. You know, we can talk about P. Diddy. Hell, even if you saw the. Um, what was the movie on BT New Edition movie? Remember, they were in that horrible contract. And then when Belle Biv DeVoe broke up and did their own thing, what did they do? They did the same thing to boys to men. 
So it's like people will go through this situation and then get in, get themselves in that position where they want to eventually be and then turn around and take advantage of the next group. And then it just keeps going on and it keeps, you know, it's like a cycle that's constantly repeating. And that's the part that's unfortunate that at this point, it's not even some of the white major labels that are taking advantage of black artists. You have some big black artists like Diddy and others who are also taking advantage of these artists as well. Yeah, it's like they get taken advantage of and then they learn the game and then they find someone to prey on to kind of like, I guess, recoup what they lost. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's definitely how it feels. And I just think like the whole situation that's going on right now in Memphis with like another rapper in the industry being killed is really sad. And I remember like even getting news reports over the next few days. It was like, you know, a killing here. Um whoever they suspected had something to do with it, people were just popping up dead. You know, they even shot up the memorial. And I know you said they're supposed to be doing a public memorial coming up as well. Yeah, they're having it at the FedEx Forum, which is in Memphis, pretty much the the biggest stadium. That's that's like the big stadium there that everybody goes to. And I'm pretty sure there'll be a lot of people. I, I think it's free. I'm not for sure. Mm -hmm. I personally am not going to go, though, because it's just been too crazy. When they had the one... Um, at uh, Makita's, the, the cookie spot that he got mm -hmm. shot at. I mean, there there's kids. It's right next to a family dollar. That it, People were shooting up that one. It's just been crazy. There's a lot of retaliation going on, and I, I don't know if it's connected or not. I'm sure there's people, because I ain't really, you know, <laughs> I ain't in the streets like that, but I'm sure there's <laughs> a lot of, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there upset and hurt, and, you know, they probably know a little bit more about the situation. So there, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on. When it first happened, like I said, they were talking about enforcing a curfew. They had a lot of uh, police patrol in certain areas that they felt were going to be hot. I don't know how helpful that was, though, because, I mean, that, that's probably a whole different podcast. But um, the the police are, it, they're, they're, there's just not enough. Like, there's not mm -hmm. enough. They're underpaid. They're overworked in Memphis. Um, so they don't really have enough out there to even do anything about all the crime. Like, they can't keep up with it. It's about the same as the hospitals. I mean, you go to the med downtown, there's literally people shot and bleeding in the waiting room. And they're just sitting out there dying because they ain't really, I mean, they're just so packed. There's so many shootings. Mm. It's like wow. COVID, but being shot. Mm -hmm. People yeah, out in the hallway, man. all kind of stuff. Yeah, and then it doesn't help because, again, you have these mandates. Yo, what's up? Baby, Hey, tea sippers to listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.